And this is different than anything, any clinic around. Workouts that are tailored for her, and that really makes a difference. Really personal. I've gotten way more mobile, stronger, flexible. Just everything just improves me to the next level. Welcome to the On Cue Performance Therapy Podcast, where we push sports performance and physical therapy to its apex. We change the game by bringing together the brightest minds in the field to offer best practices and question how things are done today. I'm your host, Mike Quintins, physical therapist and expert in sports orthopedics. I'm living my dream and open a clinic that unites all elements of sports medicine under one roof to drive recovery and performance outcomes. What's happening, Performance Therapy Nation? This is Mike Quintins, your host of the On Cue Performance Therapy Podcast. Today, I am joined by Coach Paul Graham, a teacher and football coach at Pancras High School in Media PA. Today, we discuss what it's like to be a coach and a teacher and a father in 2020. But first, I want to take a moment to thank you, our listeners, for listening, sharing, and showing the podcast some love by subscribing and leaving a five-star review. Check the show notes out. Today, I'm joined by Coach Paul Graham, who is a coach and teacher at Pancras High School in Media, PA, right outside Philadelphia. Coach Paul Graham, as some know, also know him as Mr. Graham, uh, is a teacher at Pancrest. He went to Ursinus College, where he was a two-time captain and All-American as well. He went on to coach offensive line, offensive coordinator, to be an offensive coordinator as well at Pancrest High School, a one-year stop at Radnor High School, and then also four to five years at... Ten. Ten years? Ten nine, years at Garner Valley? No. Nine years at Garner Valley. Wow, I thought it was five or six. Nine, nine years at nine Garner years. Valley High School. Uh, how many wins in those nine years? Uh, God. Oh, probably over 90 with playoffs. That's wild. And, and now back at Pancrest High School, where you are the defense coordinator. Correct. Uh, and you were D-line coach over at Garner Valley the whole time? Uh, I was D-line coach and then became the O-line coach. So Garner Valley is a different deal than Pan We have just a massive – it's more like a college staff, so – you know, we have totally separate coaching staffs. You have an offensive staff, a defensive staff. It's not like a traditional high school staff where a lot of times you have a line coach. It was, I did D-line um, for five years and then did O-line for four years, I think, if I got that right. And how many kids were on the team at Garner Valley? And now you're back at Pancrest where you're the defense coordinator. Uh, and it's, a, I mean, completely different, um, I'm not going to call it a, a project, but you're, you're starting from a different um, uh, like level at Pencrest. Now it's also, that's where I went to high school. Coach Paul Graham was my, my coach at, <laughs> back in the day. And uh, we have great relationships. So this is, for me, this is special to do this. Uh, we've stayed in touch through all the years. And uh, I'm, I'm always rooting for you. You've taught me more about uh, life and football than, uh, than <laughs> just about anybody else. So, um, so, so fill me in. Like, wh what is it like now being at Pencrest? And coming from what was at Garner Valley, and Pancras obviously isn't unfamiliar. You teach there, and you used to coach there. Um, well, yeah, it's just a huge – it's a big transition. Garner Valley is a team that has established itself as one of the top programs in southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, like you said, I mean, 90-ish 90, 90 wins in nine years, uh, multiple Central League titles in there, uh, district championship games three different times where we were playing for the district championship. And you have 100 – to 120 kids come out for the team every year. And it's that naturally, football's a numbers game. And that naturally breeds that competition where kids look around and they say, okay, I, I got to do this or I'm not going to play. I got to do this or I'm not going to play. Even for a very good athlete coming out as a sophomore, um, they got to look at that and they got to reevaluate everything. Then the flip side of that is, you know, now at Pencrest, we're, you know, 40-ish, you know, players, 40-some players on the team. And you got to find other ways to breed that competition. And, and that's always been something, you know, going back to when I was at Pencrest the first time, always a message I had that, you know, your goal can't just be to start at Pencrest. Because if that's, that means the only team we'll beat is Pencrest. Like your goal has to be, I want to be good enough to be a starter at Garnet Valley, at a Ridley, at Haverford, at Springfield, at, you know, all these teams we play, at Strathaven, who's our prime rival, that that has to be your goal. Your goal has to be, I want to be good enough to be a starter everywhere, not just, oh, I'm going to start here or 
my goal is to be all central or my goal is to be all Delco or, um, you know, inquire all area or all state. Like those are the goals you have to have. You can't, Oh, I just want to start like, you know, okay. and that's a fine goal to have it first. Then you achieve that and you need, you need another one. You need a new one. And that's, that's teaching. That's coaching. I mean, that's just trying to get people to understand that. So where does that come from for you? Cause I, I know moonlight, uh, we call it a moonlight Graham, uh, that senior, uh, is, is that where it comes from? Like, cause you were, you've been around coaching and, and teacher as well, yeah. uh, your whole um, life. So is that, tell me your, your inspiration behind that. And I'm sure there's more than just, yeah, I mean, that. that's definitely part of it. Um, you know, my dad being a coach, I was always around athletics and understood that, that, Hey, it's a, it's a competition game. It's, you know, and being competitive and everything. And, and my dad kind of, who now says he's like, well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not proud of everything I did when you were, you know, because I yelled at my son in a little league game, and then all of a sudden my dad shows up at our house like an hour later, and he's like, I just wanted to check and see if Paulie was okay. I'm like, excuse me, really? I'm like, do you remember when you made me sit in the car while you continued to coach a little league game, and I was like sitting in the car like the dog on a hot summer day, ready to pass out? Um, he's like, well, that was. I regret that now. I'm Different like, okay, time. it's going to be fine. He's got to cover home on a pass ball if he's pitching. Like that's his job. Um, <laughs> But Moonlight's le- legend. legend. Yeah. Oh, but it's, it's, you know, so he and I, great. you know, we have that, but that comes from him. And also, I mean, I was lucky that I went to a big high school where Upper Darby, you know, at the time, 3,500, 3,600 kids where fresh, I always say freshman football at Upper Darby is a great experience for any athlete because you have kids coming from Drexel Hill Middle School, Beverly Hills Middle School, Clifton Rams, Drexel Hill Raiders, St. Bernadette CYO, St. Dot CYO, St. Andrew CYO, St. Lawrence CYO. At the time, these all right, had right. thriving CYO, Holy Cross CYO, like for kids right. that played there but went to public school. And Clifton Heights, did you say Clifton, Clifton Heights? Yeah, yeah, Clifton Rams. Yeah. So you had all these youth programs that were all feeding into one high school. So freshman football was 70 kids, most of whom were a starter in eighth grade, who think like, oh, I was a starter. So now at your position, there's four or five kids that were the starter. And it's just, just this cutthroat. And I had to switch positions and became a lineman because I didn't start at tight end. I thought I was a tight end. I, I thought I was Jerry Rice. Um, but, you know, I'm not. And But, like, I was an undersized lineman at first. And then I was like, well, if I'm going to play, I got to get bigger. Like resiliency is going to come early there. Yeah. And, and I got a taste of that when I went to Carroll because I, I, I played Colts uh, football and uh, Red Street Colts. And again, for any out of town listeners, um, like we're talking like the, the, the immediate suburbs, Upper Darby is the immediate suburbs outside of Philadelphia, or right outside Philadelphia, uh, outside West Philly, actually. And talk about like a, a varying degree or uh, array of demographics. I mean, you're talking from like, uh, how many different languages are spoken at Beverly Hills Middle School? Yeah, that was, Isn't I mean, it, it was like, like 57 or something when I was yeah. going through, you know, it was insane. So like, you're going to like, you're going to have to build a degree of resiliency like early yeah. and often there. Um, yeah. And I kind of went through something like that at Carroll, having gone through weight ball. And now all these kids played CYO. Uh, St. Mary Magdalene didn't have CYO. So I played Colts and you think you're, you know, your stuff don't stink <laughs> because you're playing weight ball and this guy's 225 pounds. I'm only used to playing guys who are 140. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it, you got to get thick skins quick. Yeah, quick, and yeah. coming through, and that was, and then going through that, then it was, okay, if I'm going to be a lineman, I'm way undersized right now, and I'm going to have to work out and get better, and then it starts all over. Like, you go to college, and, and that's why I always say, like, when I got to college, when I, when I was in high school, my only goal was, like, I want to start. I want to be a high school starter. That was my goal. Like, I was like, that would be awesome. If I get to play and start varsity games under the lights, you know, and do that. And then once I started, I was like, okay, well, now I want to be all central, all Delco, all state. And then same thing in college. Like you show up to college and it's the same situation. I mean, even at the division three level, all these guys were all league players in high school for the most part. And now it's like, okay, you know, so your first goal is, well, I want to start. And then you start and then you're like, okay, I want to be all conference or I want to be all American. And it just progresses. Um, And it's funny because we were talking about it's, it's, because it came up today and we were talking, it, you say that there should be some sort of intrinsic motivation, but there, you have to see that person that you're directly competing with. Like you ha- it helps so much to see, or 
sometimes you just have to, you have to kind of cook it up in your brain. Um, and that's, you know, I always say like the left tackle from Rowan University because we played them in the national playoffs while I was there. I'm like, he was my like white whale forever. I was like, I got to get ready because we played them in the national playoffs my sophomore year. I was playing DN. He ended up in the pros, like in a camp. And he was, I mean, he was a legit prospect. He went to Kansas State as a freshman and then was playing at Rowan University. But I was like, that's who I got to get ready for. That's my, and I try to impart that to the player. I'm like, it's not always going to be someone else in this weight room that you have to like, and if you have to make someone up, if you have to find, like, you got to find that guy to compete with. And it might be a ghost. Like I always say, I'm like, I knew I was never going to play that guy again. He was on to the NFL. I knew I wasn't going to the NFL. I was a six foot tall defensive tackle, like DND tackle. I wasn't going to the NFL. I was playing division three football. I was trying to make the most of it. But he became my, like, okay, I got to get ready to play him. He, he or, drove you. He drove, yeah. he, he, when the alarm goes off, and you're like, oh, man, I really wanted the snooze so, button. You're thinking, all right, I, he's, he's awake right now. Yeah. He's on his way to the winter. 100%. Hundred percent. Yeah. And, I mean, and especially, like, that summer going into my senior year, I mean, you know that you experienced this. You're, you're working, and you still got to get to the gym. And in the summer, it's not your strength and conditioning coach that's bringing you in there or anything. It's you on your own going to whatever gym you're working out in and you come home from work and you're like, God, I just, I just want to go to sleep. And like you said, the alarm goes off and it's like, dude, I gotta get to the gym. Like, cause I'm going to play this guy and I want to be, I want to build off what I did last year. And you know, it's, it's the old like Caesar wept cause he had no more like worlds to conquer. And that's, you have to find, like they always talk about guys like, Oh, they're just happy because they got to the NFL. And it's like, for some of them, that was their highest that was it. And they made it and they got paid and they're like, okay, yeah, I, do. I don't want to be an all pro. I don't want to be a hall of famer. So, um, so, so the talent level that you saw at, at Garner Valley, uh, and now you compare that to Pancrest and it's like, it, I shouldn't even say talent level. I, maybe it's a little bit of that, but the volume, right? It's, that's, I mean, there was like a joke, like there were 40, uh, not a joke, but I remember someone telling me they have 40 seniors going out for the team. And I would think to myself, like, if you ever have 40 seniors going out for the football team, like you're, you're going to be good. Like, and most of you aren't going to play. And, right. That's the biggest thing. And that was the biggest thing culturally where we at one year, the all time high was 47 seniors. That's wild. Where if you take them and let's say, let's say offense and defense, because we were mostly two platoon is all seniors. That's two, 22. Two is you're not playing offense and defense. You're playing yeah. one way. Two platoon. You're, yeah. You're playing one way. There's 25 kids left that don't get to start on offense or defense. If you, if you go completely separate, there's 25 kids don't get to play offense or defense. Now, those 25 kids, maybe they're on special teams. Maybe they're not. But you got a junior class of 30-some kids probably in most years that are right at, and there's going to be good athletes and there's going to be big kids that are going to pass some of those. And, but they're there because it's just, it's the thing to do. But... It also breeds natural competition. And you said, like, the difference in talent level. I always said when I went there, it's not that Garnet Valley has so much better players. There's just more of them. You know, like I say, like, my when I was at Pencrest, like, some of the best players on my Pencrest teams would play. But I might have five. And here there's 15 or 20 of kids like that. You know, so... Going one deeper. way, nonetheless. Yeah, you're deeper, and there's that competition built. It's just that there's more... It's a volume of equal talent. You know what I mean? It's... Yeah. And, and not... You know what's interesting? You know, and uh, I live not far from Garner Valley. I would love for my kids to go to Garner Valley one day, even though, uh, you know, I'm a Pencrest uh, kid at heart. The, like the players wanted to join, like they want to be a part of something, like these number of seniors you're talking about. The same goes for the, st the staff. How many, how many head coaches were on that staff when you were there, you being one of them, uh, yeah. or former head coaches, I'm sorry, and coaching like tight end or D-line. I mean, that, that, the coaching staff wants to be a part of something too. Yeah, you have, I mean, you had two coordinators who were never head coaches, but were offered head coach jobs to leave. You had... Me, who had been a head coach, you had Craig Stevenson, who had been a head coach down in Delaware. Um, you had Julius Flynn, who had been a head coach down in Delaware. You had Rick Stroop, who had been a head coach at Pencrest and Sun Valley, and Ken, who had also coached college football. I mean, and like you said, so you attract, and that's that's what I always said when I was the head coach, is that when you have people move on, like I felt like at one time, my staff at Pencrest, when I was the head coach, like I thought we had a great group of guys dedicated to football. 
all in, like we had a good crew. And then just got, life happens. You know, somebody has a kid or somebody gets a new job or um, somebody moves on to coach somewhere else because you have some success and somebody gets to try to be a coordinator somewhere um, or, you know, something like that. And you're trying to find people that can be somewhere at 3, 3.30 every day and it's be tough, part of man. it. It's tough. Yeah, I mean, that's most people don't have jobs that do that. So you now get like, okay, people that are in education or people that make their own hours, you know, like, and you're just trying to fit together a staff. And then you're like, well, I hope these are good. You know, it's always, are these good people guys? Are these good football guys? And when you have, when they're both, you got a great coach. If they're a great football person who's maybe not a great per, people guy, okay, he knows football. Maybe hopefully he can impart that. If you got a great people guy who doesn't know football, he'll relate to the kids, he'll get them to buy in. And you can teach them. And you can teach them football. You know, like you need that. That's what I always, I, I mean, it's the same thing with teaching. Like, you know, I, I love math. I majored in math in college. It's great. I'm all, but me knowing it's on a math, it's now there's a piece of that because you have credibility because the kids are like, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about, but they don't come because I'm good at math. They don't show up for class because they should, you know, I always say, I'm like, come for the show, stay for the math. You know, like I'm going to get up there. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make some jokes. I'm going to entertain. And then we're going to do some math problems. And hopefully because you're entertained, you stay. It's the same thing. Like if kids love you, they're going to buy into what you're doing, and then you know, and then the, you know, you can go through hell together. I, it, I, the same goes in physical therapy. I when I took my first job in, in media, I remember the uh, director telling me, "He's like, listen, I'll teach you. I can teach you everything, right? But if you're not like, if you don't want to get better, if you don't want, it, if you're not relatable to people, um, then I don't have a chance. I, I can't teach you anything." So, uh, or, or you're not, you're not going to be successful. So the same goes with teaching, same goes with coaching. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you're looking at, you know, this year, obviously you said volume, um, and, and you're the defense coordinator. Right. Coach Smith is in, is it, is in town second year at the helm, uh, on a COVID season. It seems like it's going to happen. Hopefully. Uh, yeah. We're waiting for board approval. Um, but it looks like it's going to go off. Um, we've, so we were pushed back. We thought there was the possibility of the alternative season in the spring, like a March, April season. Um, now with everything kind of switching up, the big 10 coming back, it was okay. Well, let's see if we can do this. Let's see if we can. So now the plan is to start practice Tuesday because Monday is Yom Kippur. So the plan would be to start helmets, just helmets Tuesday, following week, helmets and shoulder pads week after that full go a scrimmage and then October 20 week that October 23rd is the Friday. So that Monday, whatever that is, would be game week. Um, wow. Playing through Thanksgiving. Wow. So getting a six game schedule, which is better than not better than where we were. Oh in my April. gosh. I, yeah. I mean, we got to get these kids opportunities, uh, not only to play. I mean, they've been working so hard their whole careers for this uh, since they were kids. I mean, who doesn't want to your senior season? Are you kidding me? Not to mention kids who want to play at the next level. Absolutely. You know, there's, there's so much um, sitting on every football season, in my opinion. Uh, and, and there's no AAU. Right. right? Thank you God. To, yeah, thank God. You're right. <laughs> we, we can dive into that one. But Conlon and I got into that. And it's another world. My gosh. I, and that's foreign to me. But yeah. with baseball, it's like that. With basketball, it's Club like that. Club teams and outside yeah. teams. And, that's, and that was one of the things as football coaches that we – that we said, like, look out because you never know. Could somebody start club teams? And now you've opened this door. Now, football's unique because of the insurance aspect of it and everything else. But you don't want to open that door to club football teams, you know, club high school football teams of that age. Because, I mean, the seven on seven circuit already is, that's something. you know, is like that's the AAU of high school football with the seven on seven teams and all that stuff. So we're trying to, you know, uh, manage our way through that. But we said, we're like, you know, these kids, we want to give them an opportunity. And I don't, you know, I don't mean to belittle what, you know, what the virus is or anything like that. Like, hey, it's a serious thing. Um, but we've been practicing two days a week since July. We haven't had one outbreak on the team. We've had, yeah, exactly. Nothing. Um, but, you know, we've, and that's kind of our case. We're like, hey, we've, we've had a team that we've asked to be responsible that every holiday, we said, listen, you want to play, do the right thing. Don't go down the beach. If, hey, if your parents are going to a barbecue with 50 people there, say like, hey, mom, dad, I'm, I'm going to stay home because I want to play football this year. Um, don't go down the beach. Don't be hanging out on the boardwalk. Like, 
just be smart with your decisions. And our kids, I think they're being smart with their decisions. I hope they are because we haven't had one outbreak um, on the team. Um, and so hopefully we can kind of get this thing going. We're waiting for the, the school board to approve. It looks like a lot of the other school boards have now approved um, our votes, you know, as we're recording this tomorrow night. Um, so hopefully... So what has this off season been like? Because uh, and take me, I can take you, or you can take me through a typical off season. Uh, I mean, like around Christmas time, the holiday season. Uh, when you come back on New Year's, if not even earlier than that, like you're like you're hitting the weight room hard, and you go from there, which is which happened, I'm sure, this past year. I'm not sure exactly when you made your decision to come to Pancras. Was it right around it was, then? Yeah, it was kind of like right after the New Year is when I made the okay. decision. Um, all right, like so, you said, so you ramp up. Here we are. We're in the weight room here. And it's, I'm the new guy and I'm there and I'm trying to, you know, get, get to know kids. Um, just be high energy, get to know, get them in there, get them working. Uh, and we had a nice group that was doing a good job. I mean, not, you know, they're not throwing weight through the ceiling, but you're seeing growth. You're seeing some kid who's fired up because he deadlifts, you know, three plates for the first time. And you're like, all right, dude, yeah, you should be fired up. Like, um, and, you know, we're, we're working through that and we're, you know, winter sports are coming to an end. We had some guys who were on the basketball team, some guys who are wrestlers who are like, they're getting back in. And then boom, right. like March, you know, 15th or whatever that Friday was, we're not going back to school. And at first it was, okay, it's, it's going to be April, right? It's going to be a couple of weeks. So right. we, we initially thought, will it be, all right, look, they'll do three weeks. Cause that gets us to spring break spring break and then after spring break we'll come back sometime in april like that'll get us if they did three weeks shut it down keep spring break as it is um week before easter and then like all right you know let's see that so that was when the kids were leaving i said hey i i I know nothing i'm not an epidemiologist i'm not you know i'm not i'm not a virologist but you do do know a lot i I try no no one has more random knowledge fact information than coach graham that's a fact i'll i'll take anyone the world on that like i'll take coach graham as i'll bet on him jeopardy any day any day and those are the most random facts iberian peninsula and i remember that one iberian peninsula that's where you yeah because that's where your people are from <laughs> um but uh yeah so we were like okay maybe we'll be back and then and then when it became obvious like we're not going back this year like it just it as time went on you were like this thing out of control we have no idea from a um liability standpoint no clue what's going to happen. You could tell the school district, even before they announced it, like we're not going back to school. It's just not going to happen. People are scared. They don't know. Well, and at the same time, now you're involved in Media Little League, correct? I'm the president of Media Little League. Oh, just the president. Okay. And then so, so, so you're involved. I know you're the president. So, so that parallel is, you know, same time so, as this. Yeah. So we had a week of indoor practices down at the Maple Zone, which is, you know, local sure. indoor so practice facility. So we're on the field down there. We're in the cages down there. We have like a week or two of practices. I've seen, yeah, like two weeks. Of, I've seen my team twice. Um, and then that, like, okay, well, we're suspending all activities for right now. And then I had to go through the same thing with Little League, like getting to a cancellation, getting to the point of cancellation for Little League, uh, where we canceled the spring season. But then football, like you said, we're, we're lifting, we're going through a simple off season. And then it became, how can we get something out of this at home? Like we, we have to assume we're coming back in the, sp- in the fall. What can we do? So it's body weight exercises. It's go get a backpack, load it up with sandbags, jugs of water, something, squat with it. You know, <laughs> like it's how can we do this? And we literally, I mean, we're having coaches Zooms where I'm saying, hey, do we want to, like, I go, it sounds crazy. Do you want to have them push mom and dad's car? Like if they can find a flat surface, like we need something. We're not training legs, like we, or, you know, like, Hills, like weighted hills. Like we need plyometric. Like we need something to activate their legs. So for this is great. Explosion. I'm so happy you bring this up. And you've gone through a transformation physically from, you know, uh, you know, all American D lineman. Uh, I remember you as a coach at Pencrest and now you're in like the best shape I ever seen you in. And so, so obviously you have a great knowledge of, of fitness uh, just having been around it for, you know, your whole life. So, if you don't mind, walk me through uh, your thought process. Obviously, they need to be in some type of shape. You can't just sit around and do nothing. Um, but you're looking for opportunities or ways you can work these kids out to get in shape during the off season. That was a pro- was that a priority to you? Yeah. Once we 
like once we shut down, we're like, we got to do something for these kids. And then we made the argument too, this is good for the for them. Like when they were in quarantine, they're at home. Like at the beginning of this in April, in May, we're like, hopefully they're at home doing nothing. Literally, there was a stay home order, order. in place. Right. So we're like, they're at home doing absolutely nothing. And so we, we said, this will be good for their mental health. I mean, same thing. School was asynchronous. So it was just post work and they could do it whenever they want. We had guys that, I'm not even kidding, like were turn nocturnal where they were struggling. They're like, hey, coach, I know we do our workout Zoom at 2.30. I'm struggling to get up for that because they were just sleeping all day, waking up, getting something to eat. I guess, I hope they were doing schoolwork. I mean, this is this is a sure. rare case, but we had right. then like playing Call of Duty all night, you know, when I through the night sure. and then sleeping. I'm like, you turned into a vampire, dude. Like, you got to get your life back. Yeah, well, you took all the structure away from, yeah. from, from the and, kids. And so, and we were like, so this is good from a mental standpoint. Get you up, get you moving. We were, we broke into teams and did team Zooms. So I had two, as a coordinator, I had two teams that I Zoomed with. Four days a week, um, four days a week or three days, four days a week, four days a week. We're zooming. We have a body weight exercise. Like, and a lot of times it was just, I checked in. I'm like, guys, you, you have to stay on the zoom. You have to do this. It was like AMRAP stuff, you know, kind of CrossFit ish, you know, Hey, if you have a pull-up bar, if you don't have a pull-up bar, do the, um, you know, air squats, push-ups, plyos, step up, something like, that's get weird. a backpack. Get all your books, put them in there. <laughs> Tell your mom to go to the go to you know Home Depot and get a bag of sand. Like you don't even have to go in the store. It's outside in the outside section. Like, get a bag of play sand and throw it in your. We were trying to think, and literally, we're having meetings on Zoom as coaches. We're like, okay, how can we do something? How can we get? So- and obviously, you know, a push up and a pull up are great exercises for you know upper body you know movements. Sure. Oh, it's yeah. like, okay, how can we activate? their lower body in a way that like we can get some sort of overload and to it. You're dealing it. with different body types and you're dealing like some of these movements may not be the most appropriate movements for every single body type, especially on a football field. Right. So uh, it's what, it, I mean, I can't, can't imagine a more challenging situation uh, to put the, the, for these kids and for you guys to put a program together. And I also add that schools, like no one was allowed on school property. Right. So like, I remember driving by Pancrest every day to get here and there were cones yeah, blocking. So this facility is closed. It was like literally no one was allowed on the campus Anywhere. at yeah. all. And the same goes for the, for the recreational parks. Uh, Coach Conlon was telling me that they cut off, the, they took off the rims. Yeah, like they took off parks. rims. I saw there was a lot of places where they put a piece of plywood on the top and bottom and put a bolt through them so you couldn't shoot. Um, just so, so they have their driveway and they have any resources that are in their immediate vicinity yeah. at home. My, my jumper was never better during quarantine because we have a basketball court. I was like, if I focused on jump shot form at 13, the way I did when I was, you know, 39 during quarantine, I'm 40 now. I was like, I might've been a mediocre high school basketball player because I was out with my son. Like we, we and his, it's out of the street and painted, anyway, painted down lines and the whole thing. But it was the same thing for like me trying to find stuff to do. And I was able to figure out, you know, but we're like, okay, what can we do for these kids at home where, Let's assume they have zero equipment um, and just trying to find that. And it's interesting because, and then later it was almost, I hate to say too late, um, you know, through modern, era, you know, the army strength and conditioning coach. And then we saw on Twitter, like I ended up following them but, and I'm like, Hey, can you shoot me what you were talking about? And it was, they made for the guys that went home. It was okay. There's three workouts. It's like, if you have a full gym at your disposal, here's your workout. If you have a barbell and weights, here's your workout. If you got nothing, here's your workout. Sick. So like they just, and I was like, oh, you know, but like when I say too late, it was kind of like once we got, I didn't get it until late spring or even, but I was like, hey, it's just good to have just in general, like going forward. And this guy was super helpful. And it was just through Twitter. He's, you know, West Point football strength and conditioning coach. He's like, yeah, sure. No problem. I'll share it with you. And it had, you know, it had speed stuff. It had strength stuff. I was like, this is just a great resource to add to my coaching library to have. Sure, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, but everybody in America was trying to do the same thing, trying to figure, I mean, all the colleges, they sent guys home. Like, okay, what can they do? And, oh, yeah. and, it, and then as you talk to guys that talk to other strength coaches and stuff, they said, yeah, kind of everybody did the same thing. Like, 
okay, we're going to program for guys that have a home gym or access to a gym. We're going to program for guys that maybe have some stuff, like they have some weights. Maybe they have dumbbells at their house. Maybe they have a barbell. They got some weights. Okay. And then we're going to have to program for guys that don't have anything with access to it. And they were all kind of going through the same thing and trying to figure it out. And as high school coaches, we were doing the same thing too. Like, okay, how can we navigate this? At, At what point did it change if it's changed at all? So it's interesting. So our school board actually let us go back into the weight room. And we were back in the weight room in July for like two weeks. And we had to break it up into groups and we had to wipe everything down. And then we were just kind of like, I don't know. Once we shut down for a week when they were, who were they doing? Redoing the gym floor. Like we yeah, had they the always gym do that. Like that. We had the week shut down, but it was earlier. So we shut down for something. They were, oh, it was an electricity thing. They had to rerun electrical all in like the gym area. So that was like late July. And then we were like, look, let's not bring the kids back inside. So what we did is we moved the bars and the, all the bumper plates yes. down to outside the stadium. And we just like made our workout. So we would take the stuff out. Like we had, you know, because we have the bumper plates on like the roll away um, rack. Sure. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The, like the floor rack. That's roll- so we took everything down there and we were like, okay, like, you know, how can we program this? But, and then we figured out like, we can, because we have numbers, we can squat without a squat rack. Like if you have a guy basically clean it and a guy on each side, like, and it's like, okay, one, two, three, and you pick it up. Like you can get 315 pounds on a guy's back without too much <laughs> that is, that's problem. A, that's, that's nuts. Uh, but it's, but it's, it's great. trying to find a way. Find a way. And, you know, we're, and this is, you know, this is not, I don't recommend this is the greatest strength and conditioning program, but like, like, hey, we want an upper body body movement. We had agile bags, which you know what they are, the sure. trapezoid-shaped agile bag. Yep. It's like, put one of those down. We'll bench on the ground. Like, just do the range of motion that you can. Like, your wow. elbows are going to hit, but do the range. Of, we're getting something for upper body. We're push pressing. We're doing, and it's like, guys, let's just find a way. Let's find a way to get something. And the first time we did it, I was like, this is awesome. Like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. The kids were into yeah. it. They were yep. moving. Yep. Everybody's working. Now you're really, like, it is a team deal because okay, we got to get this weight on your back. You know what I mean? And like, we're unloading stuff and we're doing this and we're deadlifting, we're cleaning, we're benching, we're squatting. Um, And it was just, it was one of these things where you're like, guys, you know, we could make an excuse and say, hey, we don't want to be in the weight room right now because of COVID or even if we weren't allowed. Like our district let us, not all districts let teams, but we're like, let's find. And then, and when the kids just kind of embraced it and worked and you're like, Find it a way, man. I mean, this is part of it. You're adapting. You're overcoming. You're not making an excuse. You're not a victim. Like, find a way to get it done. So a lo- uh, some of my fondest memories in high school in general were in the weight room. I mean, it, we had uh, an awesome, I had a, had a great crew of seniors. And, I mean, year above and below us, too. Uh, but my my class I, was awesome. And I'm sure there are a lot, ton of other kids that would say the same thing about their class. And the memories that are made in the weight room are unforgettable. And some of the fondest, actually, that was our JV show, was making fun of ourselves in the weight room, the junior variety show. Uh, but what, I mean, that, that's another level. I mean, you're talking yeah. about like putting together, like finding a way to lift weights outside, regardless if they got stronger or not. And I'm sure they did. You guys found a way. And like, what kind of like, what memories? That's awesome. Yeah. And they're gonna. I mean, and that's the thing. That's what I. I mean, I always say to my sons, I'm like, guys, you know, you you, you survived a pandemic. Well, hopefully, if they, we were not through it. Listen to me. But like, I'm like, you lived through a pandemic. Like, you didn't. You missed a third of your school year one year because we were in the middle of, middle of a global pandemic. You didn't start school this year yet. Yeah, sure. As we sit here, you know, late September, they are now going to go back on like a hybrid schedule. Um, they officially announced that and. They're going back, but I'm like, you, you got to find a way to, to do something. So is that, do you think that's helped the team? Like, do you feel like the team is closer now ha- having gone through that? And I'm sure that, is that what they're doing now? Or are they inside the school working out? So we do the same thing now because we just make it part of, so we're practicing twice a week now and we just adopted it because we're like, this is an easy transition. So if you remember Pencrest, like there's that grass area. If you're sitting in the home stands to yep. the left, there's that grass area. Well, now they, that's like a whole new bus garage whole deal yep and there's a storage area and so we just put all the bars in there all the bumper plates that we could carry down there um it's a hike from the weight room 
So we loaded them in my truck, okay. drove them. But then the kids had to take them down the stadium steps. So we got kids, you know, carrying 245s at a time and then like getting them down there and getting bars and everything. And we just made it one day. That was, that's what we did. Like we're moving all this stuff. Uh, and we got it all down there and we're making the best of it. Like, is it perfect? No, not by a long shot. Um, but they're doing it. It's finding a way to just get better and work on this thing. So, so who's the, who's uh, designing the program, the, doing the programming, coaching form? So right now it's myself and Coach Smith for the most part um, that are doing it, and and it's like I said. So we're down there, and it's it's core movements. I mean, it's you know it's big mo- you know multi joint movements. We're squatting, we're benching, you know the modified bench press. Sure. We're cleaning, we're push pressing, we're deadlifting. Like those are, you know, we're trying to get, you know, we had upper body movements. We're like, okay, what we can push press, you know, and we can bench press like that modified bench press I talked about. At first it was like, dude, can we squat? And then the first day it was, you know, okay, we'll figure so this, this out. Like, here we like, go. Put the weight on the bar. Get it on my shoulders. Well, it was. And it. then it's like, okay, let's see. Like, yeah. And it's, and if it's light enough, like, and we, you know, guys can. You know, two guys can get a decent amount, and then the kid kind of gets under it, you know, for the first rep and kind of get, and then, like, all right, here we go. We're going to figure this out. Someone might have, like, one of those old school two bars, like, at home, and they bring them out. You find ways. Yeah, we're so, going to find cool. it. We're going to figure it out. Um, and and that was some of it, you know, like, some of it was one leg stuff, like, especially well, during done. quarantine. It was like, right. okay. Put the back up, put the backpack on, and we'll do like you know, like like Bulgarian, you know, where you got the rear sure. leg elevated and like one leg, we're like because you don't, you're not going to get enough weight in a backpack to overload your glutes and your quads. You're, I mean, you're just not. But <laughs> yep. maybe you're getting just you're activating, like you're not just sitting, turning into a pile of mush. Oh, and yeah. if we can figure Absolutely. out something, sure. And that's, I mean, it was like, okay, yeah, one leg, oh, one leg stuff because we don't. We'll, we don't need nearly as much weight if we're doing one legged stuff. Um, and just figuring all that stuff out, man. Are you guys doing any? Are you? Were you doing speed training like plyos? So or? that was, and that was the other thing. We're like, sure, for legs, you're on the track. It's like I'm like, hey, if we can't lift weights, we got to sprint. So we told the kids like, find a spot, and it was, hey, download apps. You know, there's apps that can measure distance, and we're like. You can, you can measure a tenth of a mile. You can, me- I mean, everything down to a hundredth of a mile, sure. you can measure in like an app like Map My Run. Um, we're like, so you can go outside, walk on your street, chalk, walk, you know, whatever of a mile <laughs> that we wanted, chalk again, and we can do sprints. And, and it was just to emphasize it because that became our leg workout. And we're like, this isn't a conditioning thing. This is a, an explosion thing. This is max explosion. I wouldn't. I want max effort, rest. Max effort, rest. Because we, we don't have, especially early, like before we were adapting and trying to figure out something for overload, I'm like, this at least activates it. And if we're going, you know, if we can develop speed, you know, it's the old thing, like, you know, I'll take the speed. Anytime, any speed I can get oh as a coach. Gosh, like, and we talk about this all the time. If you want to get better, if you want to hit higher top speeds, then you have to practice hitting top speed. Yeah, you have right? to sprint. Like you're not gonna if you don't sprint, you're not gonna get faster. Like that's a reality. So uh, you guys, I mean, it seems like you guys did the right thing. We tried. Keep, now, how'd you guys do like keeping kids healthy through all this? So that was like you know as we were going through it, it was just trying to tell them to do the right thing. Ryan's great about it. I had as I've like gotten older, just like taking care of your body nutritionally. Um, it's now my number one instruction when kids leave the weight room or leave a workout. It's like go feed yourself. You know, go get good protein, whether you're supplementing with whey protein. If your parents aren't into that, go home, hey, have a couple hard-boiled eggs, have some chicken. Chicken on the, like, on the, on the George Foreman. Well, that's the other thing. I mean, you can go now, like at Costco, and you can get the big bag of grilled chicken relatively inexpensively. I'm like, dude, you can pop that into the microwave, and you can get good, clean protein. You know, Not it's good. Some of the other alternatives. You know, it's got high sodium, but it's better than a lot of other things. You know what I mean? Like you can do this. You can you can find a way to you know take care of your body, and that was the big thing. Like take care of yourself, make good choices with the whole you know the whole COVID thing. Like make sure you're not putting yourself in a situation where we want to go back to school, we want to go back to football. Make sure you're you know you're doing the right thing, doing that. As far as like we did have kids who were like, hey, I got an injury. And then it's like, okay, well, we can't really, like, what are you doing? Don't have a trainer. We don't have a trainer. Right. 
I don't know what your parents' com- comfort level is with you going to see sure a doc or P- or yeah, a PT, go see a doc or a PT or whatever. Yep. Um, and we had some kids, and that they just kind of had to ride it out. And it was like, okay, we're just gonna have to modify your program. Like, what can't you do? What can you do? And it's like, okay, we just have to modify your program, and we can do the things that your body's capable of doing. Like, Good. keep That's you awesome. active. Like, okay, yeah, you can't do the same. Okay, don't do don't do the upper body stuff. Like, okay, you got a bad shoulder. Don't do the upper body stuff. Okay, you pulled a hammy. Okay, we're gonna modify. Do more upper body stuff. Like, yeah, we're gonna have to add, kind of adapt that until you feel healthy again, and and then like you know kind of ease your way back into it, see what you can do without, like you said, without a trainer, a doc, a PT, or anything. It's like, when are they even able? Like, you don't want a kid to go back before they're ready or when they're totally not ready um, and injure themselves further or be close and then and go back to square What was this like with the parents? And then I want to talk about the kids too. Like, so just from the whole, like the, the entire mental component and psychological component more so to what these kids uh, and what the parents are dealing with along the way. Like how were the parents with like makeshift training? So for the most part, they were great. I mean, a lot of them were. And when you reached out to them and you're like, hey, you know, we haven't seen like, cause you're reaching out to the kid and you're like, hey, we haven't seen him for a couple of days. And our turnout the first day was, I think one kid missed the first time we did it. Wow. And we were like, we're like, this is better than we had can't in, get in school. Yeah. We're like, yeah, we can't get this in school. But they were stuck at home. They wanted something. It was social. Um, and so we did that. And we're like, okay, here we go. And we built from there. And for the most part, attendance was good throughout. I mean, were there hiccups here and there? And then a kid would like shoot you a text. Like, hey, I'm sorry I missed, coach. I had this. And you have kids. And that's the other thing, too. Like, not understanding the program. Like, you know, it's as many rounds as possible in 12 minutes of... <laughs> This, this, and this. And the kid comes back like, I did 20 rounds. And you're like, each round had 20 squats. So you're telling me you did 400 squats in this period of time. And then like breaking it down for them by seconds. I go, you understand that that leaves, if you did one squat a second, <laughs> like one of the programs, I remember, I'm talking to the kid. I'm like, if you did one squat a second, I go, which is a pretty good clip for 400 squats. <laughs> You're telling me that you also did, you know, because it was like 10 push-ups. I'm like, you're telling me you also did 200 push-ups in the remaining, like, minute and a half. Time to that time. Yeah. In the remaining it. minute and a half, if you were doing them one at a, you know, and they were like, I think I counted wrong. I'm like, you think? You think you counted wrong? I guarantee you counted wrong. But, um, you know, you're just figuring your way out through it. The parents were great. They supported it because they were at home with their kid, and they saw them for the first couple of weeks, like all they were doing was sitting on video games. And when I talked yeah. to parents, they're like, that's all they're doing. Um, and it was so, I mean, going back to the little league thing, it, it was so, there was two camps that like, until we canceled and we were surveying, like who would be interested in if we started a season in mid June and played into August, like just to get something. Right. And you got everything from, it's absurd that we're not playing now. This is, you know, this is all BS to, you're out of your mind for considering playing at all. Right. Um, why are we even having this conversation? Why are we having this conversation? You're putting children at risk. Again. You're putting right. families at risk. Yeah, sure. And, and it's just, and hey, when you're in one of these organizations, you got to take, I mean, you just take the bullets. Sure. You're like, hey. And then you want to say, like, you understand we're an all-volunteer organization. Like, I don't get paid to run Media Little right. League. It's like, I'm just trying. But hey, you're trying to find a way. Everybody, and everybody, yeah. they don't think that. It's not the first yeah. thing people think. It's like, it's the classic coaching thing. Like everybody, ah, like, oh, that's a terrible call. Like I do the same thing when I watch football on Saturdays and Sundays. I say, what a dumb call when I watch these guys. So I understand you're going to say that up there. Just don't say it to your kid when you get home. Like if I'm the only coach he's got, guess what? He's a senior in high school. What are you going to do? Get me fired? And then who's going to take over? Like you think Belichick's showing up? Like, oh, all right. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is great. But, but, uh, uh, it, it, you're right though. It, you're right. And, you're, and you, you, again, you, you try to find a way to do what's best for the kids. Um, but, but, Obviously, you have to take everything into consideration, and there's so much information coming in. And I had uh, recently one one of the podcasts on whether it drops before or after this, and uh, this physician said that like he is getting new guidelines. Like he just got them today, like they didn't even come out yet, and they're in his inbox, and he's lear- like he's learning now about it. So it it really is. It's impossible to have made uh, or can or even make now that the great like. The, the best decision possible because we don't know. We don't know. And that's, I mean, and running, and like I said, I was like, I run a youth sports organization. I'm not 
I'm not an epidemiologist. I'm not a virologist. I'm not a doctor. I've seen a lot of episodes of ER, but I'm not a doctor. I didn't actually go to medical school. But like, and people are, and we had everything from on our board right. from going, well, why aren't we playing? To people like saying, well, even if somebody got it, they couldn't prove they got it at Media Little League. I'm like, is that a chance you want to take? Like, and then they were, oh, okay, yeah, I shouldn't have said. That. You're a pretty level minded guy, so I, I'm happy that you were so, in that position. Yeah, uh, yeah. Even though, like, I'm sure, and it, we figured, it was a tough time. We figured it out. We ended up doing a combined fall league with Aston Middletown with another local little league, Aston Middletown, sure. um, which you know we did it, which we're in the middle of right now. Which I'm actually managing one of those teams. So in classic spread myself too thin <laughs> style, I'm currently coaching Pencrest football. I'm managing a little league baseball team. And I'm also helping out with my son's seventh and eighth grade football team uh, at the local, you know, club ball team. You didn't mention your job, actually, your real job. You're yeah, but I also teach. I also teach. teach. We're back teaching virtually, <laughs> so I'm staring at a Zoom every day um, with 20 kids on it, which at least they're coming back. So that's my real job, but then I'm doing all that. And I'm like, so every night, so I'm not home anymore. Like, I'm just, every night I'm out running around, but it's the classic line, you know, like, the days are long, but the years are short. You know, my kids are only going to play sports for so long, and sure. I'm only going to be able to coach them for so long. It's, I mean, it's the motivation behind my move back to Pencrest. Um, a, a big piece, though. I shouldn't say it's the only thing, but it's a big piece of it that my sons, if they continue to play football, which I hope they do, will play football at Pencrest High School. Um, that's where we live. And so that was my big piece of motive. I was like, because I used to always get that. They're like, oh, you're going to coach at Garner Valley when your kids go to Pencrest? I'm like, guys, I'm not going to. I'm not going to coach other people's kids while my kids are playing a game on Friday night and, you know, kind of have that existence. We're like, oh, you'll get to see like two games a year because maybe you're playing on a different night and then you'll play them. And I'm like, I'm going to coach against my kid. Like here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go, you know, attack this kid. So can't do that. <laughs> Especially when you're teaching at school, at school district. Yeah. Right? Oh, well that, yeah, that as time wore on, that got more and more uncomfortable. Did, did you guys consult with any like physicians or like, did you guys, like, how did you get your information uh, as as especially as president of the little league, uh, but also, um, also at, at Pancras. Like. Yeah. So, well, the great thing was as president of the little league, we have we have a uh, pediatric general practitioner on staff on our great. board. He's yeah. our um, he's actually our tournament director, but he also obviously is a great resource. He's a pediatric doctor, and we also have an orthopedic doctor who is actually the Phillies team doc. So. Through everything, they wow. were they were called number one. Sure, because they're on our board. They're both docs. What are you guys hearing? You know what's you know what what should we do? And they're like, I just don't. And they gave great advice. They and every step of the way, they've had recommendations. They've had guidelines like you talked about, sure. from different from CDC, from Pennsylvania Department of Health, etc. Sure. That hey, I think we can do this, or I think we can't do this. I think we can do this. I think we can't do this. Um, and it was a great sounding board for that, for specifically the health piece. And then as running a little league, you got to think about everything else. You got to think about liability. You got to think about, um, you know, like what, how are we going to sanitize bath? Like going through all that, how are we going to sanitize bathrooms? Of everything? Are we going to run a snack bar, which became a very early, oh my God, no, there's no possible way we're going to cook and serve food to people. So much change too. Like it was on every surface. It was on cardboard for 10 days. At yeah, the beginning. at the and beginning. Then, and it was and like, then, oh, my God, uh, we can't do anything. To so, now, like, we have, and you find workarounds. I mean, we we did, we did never opened, so we did the combined fall league. We never opened our bathrooms. We just had um, porta potties And that way, they're getting service. They're getting clean. They're boom, 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 boom. And it's not, it's not on us. It's kind of like, out, like, hey, this is what we have. Uh, and just working your way through that. So I was lucky to have that access. And then that... Having that information and that access and getting that, those are actually helped with Pencrest too, um, with high school sports and figuring that all out. And it gave what me a great resource, man. That's it, awesome. it just, it did. It gave me a great you. perspective on things and some information and, you know, just knowledge is power stuff. And it's like, this is great because we're not. And then the school district obviously had their medical advisors. They were talking to the Chester County Department of Health. Um, cause Delaware County doesn't have a health department. Isn't that fascinating? It's fascinating. It, it below someone told me that in the beginning. I'm like, no, you don't know what you're talking about. That can't be. It's Delaware County. Like the most diverse, yeah. uh, the, how many, like it's the, one of the most populous counties in the yes, state of Pennsylvania. For, I mean, by, after like, after Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, it's, it's up there. I mean, it's Harrisburg and some, but Delaware County, I mean, there's over a hundred thousand people. I mean, there's a few hundred thousand people in it. I mean, it's crazy. Isn't there the most 
nursing homes or uh, maybe something crazy. But the yeah. most nursing homes per uh, in the ca- like per, per county, square mile per square or mile whatever in the county in Delaware County. Yeah. But, but we don't have a health department. And early early COVID, that was that was crazy because sure. it was it was and that made the Delaware County numbers obviously that severely affected with how we know it affects old people now and everything. So it was navigating this at the beginning with both organizations was. I can't even imagine having gone through that because so much of it changed too along the way. Um, so, so you're, you're moved to Pencrest. Your, your boys are in the school district. Um, obviously a lot of challenges, volume, you know, this year, uh, t- tell me what you're most looking forward to this upcoming season. Uh, you know, knock on wood, assuming everything playing. works out. Playing is the number one. Like, play, if we get to play, that's what I'm most looking forward to. And just growth. Like I said, I mean, like we've been practicing two days a week. So we've been working through everything. It's, I mean, I'm the first year that th- I'm their defensive coordinator. So we've had to install everything at two days a week. And we've been sticking mostly. And now, like, hey, games are coming. So we've been ramping up and we're doing, you know, we're going over situational defense. And so we're going over goal line today and just that growth. Like, we went from when we installed goal line and then, like, to today. And I told them after practice, I go, guys, I go, I'm excited because the first day, the mistakes we made that I saw on all these different players doing all these different, like, fixed. And not because I'm yelling at you or reminding you because like you're learning and there's growth and, and that's all you can hope for. I mean, and that's, I'm at the point now in coaching where, you know, like having sons and having sons that play sports gives me a totally different perspective than like when I coached you and I was like a stone cold lunatic. Um, cause I was a 20 something year old dude. He said it, not me. Yeah. Well, I was a 20 something year old dude that had just come out of college football who, had a track record of being coached by some stone cold lunatics. Like my <laughs> high school and college coaches, amazing coaches that knew a lot of football, but were wild men. And I think that's what we needed uh, at, at the time. I mean, we, I mean, we responded well to it. I think. And oh, well, yeah, I think I had a great experience. But you guys were great role models too. <laughs> most of you guys, at least. Coach Conn and myself, <laughs> uh, I mean, really have built, you know, a thousand lives have been built on the example set by uh, Jim Cunningham and myself. Um, yeah, but we can edit that. But, <laughs> but, um, like now that I have kids, it's, it's, I have a different perspective on, I'm like, I just want to see you get better. And that's, and my two kids are totally different personalities. They're different kind of athletes. They're definitely different kind of athletes to me. I mean, they're like skill position players. They're super quick. They're super fast. Well, it's, 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 Sarah is a great athlete. She fun. was a good athlete yeah. in her day, my wife and she was speed and quickness. She's a little person, like she's speed and quickness. And they, as I always say, you know, it's the, it's an ongoing media little league joke. Like, thank God their mother was an athlete. Like, you know, (laughs) every time one of them runs for a touchdown, thank God their mother was an athlete. Every time one of them gets a hit, thank God their mother was an athlete, which is a great (laughs) running joke. I love it. Um, (laughs) It is. It's funny, man. Uh, And it's on cue anytime either one of them does something like there's no way. I see you did that. that. (laughs) Um, But but obviously the expectations change, right? Like I remember when I played and you were like, like it's got like do it right. It's got to be perfect. Get the rep right each time. And and there's nothing wrong with that because that's what the standard I at least held myself to. But now your expectations may be like, all right, like, is it better than yesterday? Is it better than the last rep? And that's a, that's a different that's and a that's, game changer. And that's install and teaching. And that, I mean, and some of that is, I mean, you know, you don't know if you get, you know, I don't want to say you get softer as you get older, but like you understand things. I mean, we talked about, you know, sure. one of my running jokes is I don't yell at my dog because he can't shuffle cards. Like I don't expect my dog to shuffle cards. But if I know you're capable of this, you better believe I'm going to be on you about it because you're capable of this. And you not doing it is either a mental lapse Either you didn't care, you didn't focus, whatever, why ever, whatever the reason is, like, I'm going to get on you to make sure it happens because you're capable of it. Now, the, the flip side of that coin is I'm not going to get on you for something that I know you're physically incapable of doing. And it's my job as a coach to find what can you do physically that can accomplish the same goal for us. It's, I mean, I always say, if I tell, if I have a 180 pound offensive lineman, I tell him like, you got to you know, you got to knock Aaron Donald off the ball. That's terrible coaching on my part. Like he, he could do everything I tell him to correctly and Aaron Donald still beat him. But, but then it's like, okay, 
But it's so my job as a coach is when Aaron down Donald down. shows up, like, I'm going to give you an angle. I'm going to down block. We're going to get, hey, I don't need you to kill him. I just may, need you to make sure he doesn't go this particular direction. Um, and just that's coaching, like finding that we got to work with what we got. And and I've gotten better at that as I get older. Uh, and I maybe like early in my career, maybe wasn't as good at that and maybe did get on people. And, you know, and the other part like that, you know, you've evolved like, and I think I was always good with this, but like, you're always going to challenge technique. Don't like, and in football, sometimes it's too easy to challenge manhood. Like sometimes it's a, it's a testosterone driven sport. And sometimes guys fall into that trap of like, you know, I'm going to get on this kid. I'm going to tell him he's a wimp or worse and try and motivate him like through fear or through intimidation. But it's like, Nah, I'm going to challenge you on your technique. I'm not going to challenge you on it because you never know how a kid responds to that. And you don't know what's going on outside of this place. And it's like, I'm going to challenge you on technique. I'm going to get you to do the right technique, but I'm not going to challenge your manhood. I'm not going to come at your character. You're a lot, like, you're a lot, you're a lot, um, a lot more aware now than you were before. And not that in, uh, you're right. You didn't do that when I was, when, when I was playing for you, uh, when you, when you played, that may have happened. I'm sure it happened yeah. all the time. Uh, but like you say, you don't know what's going on out at home or outside of that place. And wh- and where's that going to get you, right? right? Like, you know, like you, you're not going to get the best outcomes when, when you're coaching that yeah. way, in my opinion. And if you're doing that just, and that's, and more and more, it's about like the relationships like this. Like, I love seeing you, like when I get a chance to see you and some of the guys you played with and different teams. The other night when I was coaching my son's team at BYC, his seventh and eighth grade football team, two guys that I coached with at Garner Valley came out to help me who are two of like my all time favorites, a part of a group that I had there of offensive linemen that I loved. And they came out there like, and I didn't know they were coming. So the guy that's the head coach of the team, he knows them. And he's like, he's like, I got you some help tonight. And they're like, coach. And so they were there. I was like, God, this is, you know, because they know what I want. They know how to teach it. But also I'm working with the guys that I taught how to do this. And now I'm getting to see them teach little kids how to do it. I say little kids. I mean, seventh and eighth graders. I get to see them teach people how to do it. You get to see that that next level of, there's nothing that I like more than when I see a guy that I coached coach. Because I'm like, okay, there, uh, hopefully there was something about me or whoever he had. It doesn't have to be me. But there was something, hopefully, that what I did made him say like, oh, I want to do that. Well, you, you had your goal as a coach or teacher or anyone, even in my, even as a physical therapist, is to have an influence, right? I mean, that's a that's a part of it, and that's somewhat that's not self loathing, but that's like that is that's a huge piece of it. And to know that someone you coached is now coaching in some way, one way or another, you've had an influence on them and their careers. And you and I have talked about it. I would love to get back into it again. You know, my hands are a little tied up right now, but. Um, I, I loved it. And you were a huge part of that because of the relationships, right. And, and what it comes down to, whether it's in physical therapy or coaching or being a physician, it, it, the best ones love the relationship component of coaching, teaching, whatever it may be treating. And, uh, and that's what separates you from, from the rest. In addition to your knowledge of everything else, right. That's part of why you love the relationship because you can adapt to anybody. Right. And that's what football teaches you. 100%. I mean, and that's football. And that's what they, I mean, that's the big thing you hear all the time now about like football, like the huddle. Like it's that great thing that like when you're in the huddle, you're just Pencrest football. When you're in the huddle, you're just, you know, whatever. Garner Valley football. You're just cuts down football. You're just, whoever. I mean, you're whoever. When you're in that huddle, you're not the poor kid and the rich kid. You're not, you know, whatever. If the you're, white you know, kid, the black kid. The white kid. kid, the black kid, the poor kid, the rich kid, the smart kid, the dumb kid. Like when you're in the huddle on a Friday night and you're going to like, you're just Pancrest football. Like, and that is, and not enough of us have that experience. Um, and I think football, because it is such a team oriented game, like, you know, you, you could have, if you have the greatest quarterback in the history of mankind, but there's nothing in front of him, you're never going to know how good he is. And you could have the greatest running back in the history of mankind. And if you don't have a line in front of him, you're never going to know. Or receivers that can catch the ball, you'll never know how good that kid like you have to work together. There's not a choice. Was it ever a consideration that you wouldn't let your sons play football because of the health concerns, uh, concussions, injuries? Yeah, inside? absolutely. I mean, no, I, I'd be lying if I said I didn't. I, I held them back. So I held them back until fourth, 
what's the seventh grade? Fourth grade was his first, my older son's first year. And that's when I let the younger one do it too. Like fourth grade is, and I thought it was going to be middle school. That was, that was kind of the line yeah, that I, I made. We, we talked about this before. I was like, we like, we'll see middle school. Yeah. I was like middle school. Like I was like sixth grade, you can go play weight ball, whatever. And then weight ball went away. And now like, now all the leagues are unlimited weight, which I, I like and don't like. Um, but it was like, okay, we'll wait till middle school. Like I just, you know, hey, here's everything. And then he just really wanted to play, the older one. He begged me and he begged me and he begged me. And he had been around football his whole life. And he basically, like, and my wife was like, yeah, I don't have a problem with it. And he kind of wore me down. And I, you know, and then I say, like. You can admit this? And then, well, yeah, I mean, I was ready. To, I was ready. To, I always say, because I tell people, I'm like, I'm a football coach. And I had that thought. Like, if you're. If you see the things out there and you don't have that thought, you're, you know, you're just not doing your homework. But then as I look more at I'm like, I mean, that's a nine million now or other discussion. But like the CTE thing, it's, you know, like when you look at the research for people that played high school football and people that played college football, there's not a tremendous, like any statistically, think, statistically it's significant it's difference in cognitive ability, dementia, et cetera. It's in the NFL, they're really strong they're really fast and you're a fully formed adult with a fully formed brain that's already like everything you do to it it's not going to repair when you're an adult and it's sure. it's to a degree it's an nfl problem it's a it's a football public relations problem no doubt um but the concussion stuff the health stuff but then as i looked at it i'm like i think about everything that i took out of it and you know we talked earlier football was and I'm not like, you know, football is where I was challenged. Like school as a kid was pretty easy for me. And I'm not saying that to like, you're smart, you're the best. Um, but f- school was pretty easy for me. Like I was able to kind of show up and do pretty well. And I was a math major. It just clicked for me in college. I had to work a little bit, but for the same, I always had to work at football. Like I wasn't able to just, and football taught me to be, a grinder and to be a hard worker and do that. And it, I was like, I can't, I can't replace that. And football, like same thing, like the huddle. I, you know, I went to high school with in upper Darby where at the time, like upper Darby was spread out socioeconomically everywhere from super poor kids to, and at the time, like you had kids in Drexel Hill who who had two professional parents who were relatively, you know, upper middle class, relatively affluent. Um, And you had all that, but you hit the field and, we were just upper Darby football. I go to college and then in college, like the the racial makeup of the team is much more integrated. And, yes. You know, and now like, and that's huge because now you're exposed to people that have these different backgrounds that you understand. And like to this day, you have these relationships with and, you know, and guys that you know well enough that it, with the times we're going through, like you can have honest conversations with it. Guys that you're tight enough with because dude, we, we went through the wars together. Um, that you can have honest conversations with and then coaching kids from all different backgrounds. Um, and that's, and trying to make that, I mean, that's another area where like football's huge and having that where you can have like an honest conversation with somebody that knows like, dude, I, I know you, you know me, like, you know, that, you know, I, I hold no ill will towards any race, religion, creed, whatever. And you know that, so we can have an honest conversation where, Something doesn't get said and you go, huh? Where now because of that, like, hey, we can have that conversation. Like me and a guy. Sure. I coached if they know like, hey, that, yeah, coach cared about me. You know, like coach didn't care that I was, you know, that I was black, that I was Asian, that I was dumb, that I was poor, that I was smart, that I was, you know, whatever. Like coach didn't care. Like he just coached me and cared about me. Hopefully that's the thought kids have. And then you can have like honest conversations with people. And that's part of it. You have to have those relationships with people. So you can say like, okay, like what, you know, what can we do or what's different or what's, what's, what, what do you see as the issue without sounding like an idiot? Yeah. So, that's come up in previous podcasts. Uh, Dr. Trisha Beatty. Uh, I asked her, I said, you know, your son wanted to play football. You, you let him play. And she treats concussions. Like she team doc for some of the schools in this area. And um, she's like, yeah, of course. Yeah, I think so. Why not? And I was like, well, CTE and, you know, concussions, you see what kind of effect they have. She's like, we're better at treating them than we ever have been. We're better at, at recognizing them and seeing them. And um, regardless of concussions, like it, team sports teach you more about yourselves and how to live life in probably 
parallel more with life than anything else right. that, that you can do. So you you can't you can't replace that. Yeah. And my and, boys and both, how about football? Like you got heavy kids, you got skinny kids, you got like you said. So that's yeah. everything else. And both my boys, they love it. I mean, it's their number one. It's their favorite. They both like it's their number one sport for both of them. So yeah, I mean it's 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 the ultimate game of strategy and uh, and and patience. Uh, people in general ask me that a lot. Like, all right, like what do you think? You know, like like if you were to have a son or whatever, they're gonna let them play. Yeah. I, I I don't know. I think tonight now more than ever, I would say yeah yeah. I was and for a lot of the same reasons you just mentioned. I was always gonna let them play. It was a question of when. I was ne- because um and and some people that I work who aren't quote unquote football people who are like, well, and I say, well, I played football and it's been of more value to me. And I go, I'm, you know, I'm a fairly productive human being. You know, I only drool like three days a week, you know, like, <laughs> but no, like, you know, I'm still with it. I'm still, uh, listen to me, still with it and everything. But I know all sorts of people that have played foot, and it's just the value that they took out of it. It's not like, and I'm not, again, I don't mean to diminish CTE as an issue, but it's, I do think, a, and statistically even, it's an NFL yeah. issue, that, like you said, but they're better at diagnosing it. They're better at treating it. And they've really found it only when it's been like, hey, I think this guy has CTE. I, I don't even think you have to diminish CTE to make a case for it, to be honest with you, just because of how much it teaches you. I mean, there's so much. It, it's, um, it's, it's extremely unique in uh, the number of, the accountability, the number of athletes uh, uh, the size of the teams, uh, what, what you have to go through together. Uh, so it's uh, the locker room, the weight room, right? It's just a, it's a lot of preparation, and it's not an individualized sport um, in, in a lot of ways. So um, that's that's everything I got. Uh, what, what else you got? You got anything you want to add? Nah, I don't think. I mean, we covered a lot of ground, man. Um, it's just it's been great. It's been great. I mean, it's great being here with you, um, guy. I coached guy that I've and have gotten to, you know, continue to know as an adult, which doesn't always happen. I mean, sometimes you coach somebody and then it's just, you know, paths diverge and whatever, and you see them and you're like, hey, but I've been lucky to, to the degree I have, to continue to have a relationship with you and some of the other, I mean, you said like trying to get you to come back. We were trying to get Mike O'Donnell on board and he just this week was like, hey, I just got too much. I got too many. We're, we're in the same, he, we work for the same company. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. technically. So, so it, it's, he was it's, like, it's I just crazy. got too many plates in the air right now and with family and everything. Because I thought I had him. I thought I had him. I, was, I would push for that too. He, um, he's great. He's great and, uh, and I was like, I was like, I want you. I don't even care about football. I was like, I just want to, I just want to see every day and like get to hang out with you. And, um, because that's, I mean, with coaches, like that, those relationships, you know, like, you know, with Jim Cunningham, who was defense coordinator when you played, uh, he and I, like the friendship we developed that we don't get to see each other nearly as much anymore. But when we do, it's boom. I mean, it's the same thing with guys you, like you said, that you played football with. The relationship, bang. You don't see them for five years. Then you get together and it's like the last time you saw it, it's guys you went to high school with. It's like, oh, it's like the day you graduated, it's the same relationship. It's guys you went to college with. It's like, yeah, the last time we were in college, even though we've seen each other in between, like we go right back into that same friendship, sure. that same level of. It's just it's it's a degree of trust with yeah. that. And, and it's the same with you. Think. Like we drop right back into, you know, you and your, you know, your first scrimmage blitzing linebacker, cutting the dude it's like really down I low. Remember that. Oh, I, I'll never forget. Well, the things I remember about you, we had this little kid show up that had a steel plate in his arm. We found out because he had snapped his arm when he was at Carroll. And we're like, he's like, ah, yeah. We're like, what's that? Ah, I had surgery. I'm like, what happened? I snapped my arm. They had to put a steel plate in. I'm like, okay. So we have this, this short, like, Terminator type dude. And, and then, like, in like one of the first scrimmages, blitzing linebacker. It's a great might, blitz this might have been up. your junior year. Uh, so was it your sophomore year? I mean, it's against Sun Valley. It's against Sun Valley, yeah, at, at our place. And you just cut this poor kid's legs out as a as which is against high school it's rules, legal cut. in college, legal, you know, in other levels of football. So you had seen it, and you just wiped. It was great. This kid blitzed, and you cut his leg, and I was like, oh. And you're like, what? I didn't. And they throw a flag, and I'm like, yeah, you're not allowed to cut when you're. I didn't know, and you were all nervous. I'm like, no, you legitimately didn't know. We were in like, shotgun. That's the only reason why. Well, I guess I can't cut. Period. As a running back, but uh, at that position, but it was great cut. It's great cut. I mean, you took the dude. I mean, you want to talk about low bridging somebody? I mean, this kid. <laughs> the kid's never been the same. He's somewhere on a podcast right now talking about this little kid from Pencrest low bridged me, and I, my back and my knee has never been the same. Oh gosh, this uh, a pleasure as always. Uh, definitely one of my favorite people, and you've done so much for this community. I'm 
when someone told me you're a media little league, uh, you know, that's aces. Uh, you know, you're a Delco guy. I'm a Delco guy. I'm not going anywhere. And, and uh, you know, we'll keep this thing going. And anyway, we can influence and help. And that's what we do. So, awesome. uh, yeah, pleasure. How, how, do, how can our listeners get in touch with you? Um, whether it's through uh, social media or so email, um, or social media I'm, uh, Twitter I'm at PA Graham 90 is probably the best way like if you want to hit me up on Twitter I'm PA Graham 90 and you'll see it's a you know Paul Graham you just see it's a picture of me as a coach like with my arms around you know my guys so uh, that'll be, in the be show pretty notes. obvious that it's me cool that'll be in the show notes and uh, it's a wrap good work awesome thank you thanks for listening to the on cue performance therapy podcast If you like this episode, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It would mean so much to me if you could leave us a five-star review so more listeners like you could get this important information. See you next time.